we are continuing to explore the key fundamentals of the sufficiently general theory of governance. And today we will begin a difficult, probably one of the most difficult issues making up the sufficiently general theory of governance. This is the theory of supersystems, consideration of processes flowing in supersystems. In the previous lectures, we briefly familiarized ourselves with the concept of supersystems. You remember that a supersystem is a super complex system. Science has the following definition of super complex systems. A super complex system consists of a plurality of similar elements that possess memory, on the basis of which every element can be self governed pass information to other elements, thus exerting a governing impact on other elements of the supersystem, receive information from other elements of the supersystem by somehow reacting to this information. After all, received information is governance, whether we want it or not. The concept supersystem emerged in computer science and is applied to solve many tasks. To explore outer space, rockets are used to launch satellites. When controlling satellites, they use supersystems. A rocket is prepared, and to control the satellite, supersystems are applied. Just imagine a satellite in orbit, and we cannot touch it. This is why controlling, ruling, is carried out through telemetric systems which pass information on pressure, temperature, water stock. If there is a cosmonaut flying in a rocket, these systems also pass all information onto the cosmonaut himself, and all these data need processing, as manual ruling is not possible. Ruling of the machine is carried out through radio commands. I'm saying all this in order to emphasize that processes flowing in supersystems in science are more or less formalized, which makes it possible to apply these existent accumulations in science to other processes. To what processes? Let's look at people. What are we? We are also supersystem. Every person has memory on the basis of which he is somehow in a self-governing mode, lives, socializes with others, passes information to other elements, other people, with the help of speech, books, and so on. He also receives information from other elements through conversations, communications, literature, and so on. To put it differently, mankind is also a certain supersystem. However, in the universe, there are also the same processes flowing. The Sun passes information to the planets, including the Earth. For instance, a flash on the Sun can constrict or dilate some people's cardiovascular systems. Or another example. A stone is heated by the Sun, then cools down, is heated, cools down. After a while, it splits. Speaking of the Moon, it also exerts impacts, high and low tides, for instance. As for the other planets, they also exert their impacts. In other words, the universe is also a super system in which the same processes of passing of information, governance and so on flow. In this lecture, we will look into mechanisms of how all this happens. Why will we do it? Not just for nothing, not just for a mere discussion. We will look into processes flowing in supersystems in relation to processes flowing in the life of people. Definitely, you can and have to look into processes in supersystems and apply these processes to the entire universe. But as mankind is in a crisis, it is better to make examples of society. Human society is a super system, which is inscribed in other super systems. This is what we are actually going to talk about. What processes take place in relation to us, 
and what to do in order to live with dignity and in a truly happy way. This is why one has to know the fundamentals, the basics. These are the basics that we are going to talk about now. So, we say that creation as a whole is a supersystem, which is portrayed as an encompassing supersystem in relation to a plurality of hierarchically and other supersystems. Moreover, there exist such elements which belong to a few supersystems, and there are also such elements which belong to different supersystems at different points in time. A supersystem can also be a structure which changes at any time, a so-called virtual structure. To say it differently, a plurality of supersystems exist parallelly. Elements of one supersystem we can mark with green dots. Elements of another supersystem we can conditionally mark with red pluses. And elements of a third supersystem with blue minuses. And they all exist at the same time, although you see that they are different supersystems. When these supersystems contact each other, they become mutually interwoven. This is what is understood by mutually interwoven supersystems. It should be highlighted that intellect is always present as the entire function of governance is fundamentally an objective quality of the universe. Intellect can be in a supersystem itself, or intellect can be encompassing higher hierarchical governance in relation to this supersystem. We have repeatedly said that if a ruler governs according to the entire function of governance, he has to be able to detect, discern factors which have impacts on the object and the subject of governance. A ruler has to determine his goals of governance, where he is going to lead his object of governance, how to achieve the set goals, and so on. But this implies creativity, which is possible only with the help of intellect, as intellect is an ability to work out certain new informationally algorithmic modules, which beforehand were not inherent to the object of governance, an element of the supersystem. The intellect can be external in relation to the supersystem. In this picture, we see a schematically depicted intellect, supersystem, the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. From now on, we will mark the supersystem as in this picture, with blue circles. Of course, this is a schematic graphical depiction in order to somehow depict it visually. So, the highest hierarchical encompassing governance is always present, which rules, governs the entire creation. And in the picture, we see a certain external intellect, which exerts its governing impact on the supersystem. Intellect can also be internal. This is what we can see in the next picture. This certain internal system intellect exerts a governing impact on all elements of the supersystem. Intellect can be possessed by supersystems consisting of intellectless elements, a certain subset of elements of the supersystem, certain elements of the supersystem one or several elements which inside of their structure have elements possessing intellect. To put it another way, the location of intellect inside the supersystem can vary. And now let's look into what conjugate intellect is. Conjugate intellect is an intellect carrying out self-governance of a supersystem as an integrated whole within the boundaries of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, independently of the location of this intellect in relation to the supersystem. Intellect can be external in relation to an intellectless supersystem, internal, that is to say, generated by a supersystem itself. What kinds of supersystems are there? 
So, the super systems are core super systems. They exist stably in a certain balancing mode, as long as conjugate elements of these super systems exist. Super systems with a regenerative element base. Evolving super systems. These are such super systems which themselves, as well as their elements, possess a certain reserve of stability in relation to the impact of the environment, possess a certain potential of development of their qualities, thanks to the perfecting of the organization inside the system, as well as inside the elements. So, mankind is a super system with a regenerative element base. Further on, a question arises. Is mankind an evolving or core supersystem? Mankind is an evolving supersystem with a regenerative element base. Why? Because every element has his own genetically determined potential of development. And in general, all elements as a certain whole possess a necessary potential, which the supersystem as a whole has to master in the process of its development, and which, the potential, is somehow distributed to all elements. Now, we are coming to the question, when does the development of supersystem begin? We know that our supersystem was created as a result of a cascade of mutations. That is, today's person comes from a proto-person, and turned out to be genetically enclosed in relation to his ancestor, the proto-person. It all worked out in such a way that the supersystem was introduced into the encompassing supersystem with a certain goal. But that supersystem, which generated contemporary mankind, fell into nothingness. This is a very serious question. It is all about what we live for the meaning of life, and what will happen to mankind after we have mastered our genetically determined potential. That is, what tasks await us after that. At this point, we can't even imagine these tasks. We can't even fathom this. Only God knows what state of development we can reach. As for us, we can guess, suppose, make prognoses, and obtain certain revelations from him. Localization of a supersystem is the beginning of the process of mastery of the genetically determined potential of development. When does a supersystem appear? There is a certain environment that is under the control of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. A supersystem is introduced into this environment for the realization of certain goals, a certain design. Governance, as we already know, in principle cannot be aimless. Therefore, a supersystem is not introduced without goals. If something is done, that something always has some purpose, some goals. In the same way, humanity, speaking in scientific terms, was introduced into the environment of the biosphere of the planet Earth to solve the assigned tasks. In the language of ordinary people, the introduction of humanity into the environment would sound like people appeared. The time of the beginning of adaptation of the supersystem to the environment and the mastery of the development potential is the beginning of the functioning of the supersystem. The environment represents a plurality of processes that the supersystem deals with. These processes can be material, in particular energetic, informational, mixed. All these leads to two types of isolation and or localization of the supersystem as a whole, its fragments and its elements in the pan-universal measure, spatial localization, informational localization. An example of spatial localization is human subjectivity, since it is a particular measure with the help of which you can measure some parameters. Space is an informational characteristic of material objects of the universe, 
reflecting into a personal subjective particular measure. They are interweaving and in order along the hierarchical levels of the universe in accordance with the pan-universal measure. Another example of spatial localization is a heliocentric model of the solar system. This picture shows the Sun, around which the planets revolve. This is a certain supersystem, a heliocentric model of a fragment of the universe. It exists under the impact of a certain environment within the galactic layers, which in their turn are at a certain galactic level, and so on, up to the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. Informational localization is an informational characteristic of informational objects, which informational localization reflects into a subjective measure their interweaving and hierarchy, regardless of the material carriers on which information is also recorded in accordance with the pan-universal measure. An example of informational localization can be the following. The same information can be placed in the foreword to the book, in the afterword, or it can be scattered throughout the book in footnotes, in notes, and so on. Now, let's talk about the interaction of the environment and the supersystem. Here is the picture again. There is a supersystem, its elements. This whole supersystem is exposed to an environmental impact. And all this, as we already know, is within the boundaries of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. For every and each of the elements of the supersystem, this entire supersystem is part of the environment. All elements of the supersystem are, to some extent, autonomous in terms of a material and energetic carrier and informational content. But all elements are close to the entire supersystem as a whole. The supersystem as a whole is also autonomous to some extent. So, I'm sitting in front of you. I'm also an element of the supersystem. But bosses, subordinates, relatives, acquaintances, also the encompassing systems like nature, weather conditions, impact me. That is, in relation to me, the rest of the supersystem of humanity is a dominating factor that embraces me along with the rest of the environment. That is, it is impossible to live in society and be free from all this. And even from the given scientifically grounded facts, we see quite specific conclusions for those who strive to stay away from politics or something else. They will handle such people, believe me and they will handle them even if they run away to a forest. So, in Russia, a priest named Vissarion appeared, who claimed to be Jesus Christ, who again had come to Earth to save mankind. So, he says that there is a crisis on Earth now. It is dangerous to live. There are global problems. Therefore, he and his flock went to live in a forest. He says that when all the global catastrophes have passed, he will come out of the forest. Nevertheless, tax service gets him even in the forest. His flock is suing him because he collected money from his flock. Moreover, many sold their apartments in St. Petersburg in order to get into the so-called City of the Sun. But not having got along with each other, they demand their money back from him, and he claims that he has nothing. The true unrighteousness of this Jesus Christ, in comparison with the historical real Jesus Christ, we will leave out of consideration. But here I would like to emphasize that a blowback will boomerang on people wherever they are, including in a forest. So, the entire environment impacts each and every element of the supersystem. From the same principles, one can ponder on global politics, domestic politics, foreign politics. But in relation to the environment, the supersystem can be. The supersystem is not enclosed with respect to the environment. 
the super system is governed only by the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, being isolated from the environment. The super system can maintain its existence due to environmental resources. As you see in the picture, there is a super system, and the environment fits the super system with its resources. There can be an exchange between the super system and the environment, that is, their interaction is reciprocal. In other words, the environment exerts its impact on the super system, but the super system also exerts an impact on the environment. Let us ponder in relation to human society. So, we are a super system. The environment for us is the biosphere of the planet Earth. Can we exist being isolated from the environment? No, we cannot. That is, the first option is not suitable for us. But the second option is, because the environment feeds us with resources. And what about us? Do we interfere with the environment? We do interfere. That is, we influence the environment, and we interact with the environment. And now, the biosphere of the planet Earth, is it nourished, or is it autonomous towards the environment? In other words, do the solar system and all its fragments, like the Sun, the Moon, other planets, have an impact on the environment? They do. There are flashes in the Sun. The rhythms of the Moon affect high and low tides. We also have day and night, cold and hot weather, winter and summer, and so on. That is, the environment interferes, it exerts an impact due to its resources. Does the Earth have an impact on the environment? Definitely does, also in terms of the movement of people. You also know that the Moon is held by the planet Earth, and its oscillations are under the influence of the Earth's gravity. In the same way, the Earth, as well as the other planets, affect the Sun and the formation of the plasma component that determines the behavior of the Sun. The Earth, as well as the other planets, exert an impact. Therefore, the third variant of the interaction of the system with the environment is inherent for us. Let us now consider the informational content of elements of the super system. And in order to correctly understand all that I'm now going to tell you, you should keep in memory everything that we have gone through in the previous lectures. On a large scale, you should remember that the world is one and holistic, and all processes are oscillatory and represent an inseparable, tri-united process of MIM, matter information measure. Matter changes its informational content according to the measure of development. There is no imageless matter, and all matter is vested with a certain measure. Any information is also vested with a measure. There is no thing without an image. The Quran, Surah 25, Ayat 2, says, He to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, who took to himself no son, who never had a partner in his kinship, who created everything and determined its measure. Here are three building blocks to always keep in mind. And then what else should you remember? You should remember that all processes are governable. Ungovernable processes do not exist. And all processes are either governable or self-governable. Any process can be considered both from the level of governance and from the level of self-governance. But even in order to enter into the self-governance mode, first, this self-governance mode must be organized. Therefore, if it seems to someone that he is autonomous and independent, then all this is within the framework of a certain hierarchy of governance. The transfer of information, that is, an oscillatory process, 
flowing in the inseparable trinity of MIM, matter information measure, is a process of governance. I am telling you all this once again, not just for nothing, but in order to make it easier for you to master the topic of informational content of elements of the supersystem. And we already know that any information is inseparable from matter, because there is no abstract information, it is always on a certain material carrier, and information is always measured. So, for example, a word is a measure or a code, a letter is also a code or a measure. Any oscillatory processes are vested with a measure. The frequency characteristic of vibrations oscillations are also a measure. A particular cipher in a frequency is also a certain measure. If I say the informational content of elements of the supersystem, you must remember all that was just mentioned, that the universe is a triunited process, that the passing of information is always governance, that information is passed by means of a certain material carrier. The passing of information changes the state of another fragment of the universe, and so on. All this you have to remember well, and this is what the ancient Egyptian Jretzis deprived us of. Lyricists were given lyrics, physicists were given physics. But neither lyricists nor physicists were given the holistic knowledge in order to manipulate lyricists as well as physicists. So, here is an element of the supersystem. It is marked by blue, and the red one is its informational module in the form of an egg. And the egg consists of two parts, the top and the bottom. Informational content for the behavior of the element that is, informational content for self-governance of the element, is organized in a two-leveled way. Level 1. The fundamental part. It is identical, the same for all elements of the supersystem. It ensures that the elements of the supersystem stay in the environment with a certain margin of stability from the moment the supersystem is introduced into the environment. If this is not the case, then the supersystem cannot stay in the environment and is forced out, destroyed by it. Level 2. The adaptive part. It develops in each and every element in an individual way on the basis of the fundamental part in the process of functioning of the supersystem. In the fundamental part, there can be a hierarchical ordering of informational algorithmic modules. In the picture, you can see initially different hierarchical ordering of informational algorithmic modules in the fundamental part. The fundamental part is necessary to ensure the initial specialization of elements, making them partial, not full, analogs to each other. An example of such an initial different hierarchical ordering of informational algorithmic modules in the fundamental part is a division of elements of the supersystem according to their sexes. If the informational algorithmic modules are initially placed like this, then the element of the supersystem belongs to the male sex, and if like that, to the female sex. This means that, initially, in relation to the fundamental part, the elements are the same as one another, but there is a division by specialization. One of the goals of this kind of specialization is to provide a regenerative element base so that the supersystem can multiply. To put it in other words, there can be no adaptive part without the fundamental part. And if the fundamental part is always the same for all elements of the supersystem, then the adaptive part is different, it changes, it grows in volume as its experience develops. I mean that with the accumulation of experience, the adaptive part grows too, becomes bigger, as you can see in the picture. 
Remember, we talked about genetic and social potentials. Now, social potential is prevailing over genetics. The adaptive part develops in accordance with the fundamental part. Therefore, the adaptation of a man and a woman is also different. Everything that I said is reflected in the structural organization of the material carrier of informational content, that is, in each and every element of the structure. In large supersystems, all this is reflected in statistical characteristics of the variation of the parameters of elements and is predetermined in a probabilistic sense. Due to this, instantly irreplaceable elements are probabilistically replaceable by other elements for a certain probabilistically predetermined time, since informational modules can be introduced into their memory, adaptive part, providing a new specialization when some elements are replaced by others. So, in fact, we are talking about the stability of the supersystem. If some factor affects the elements of the supersystem, and one element cannot determine what kind of factor it is, another element cannot determine either. But since there are many elements, and every element's life path is different, then it is probabilistically predetermined that from the whole plurality of elements, one will say, what are you guys doing? An asteroid is flying towards us, it will crush us, but we are sitting around. All of you have probably seen the American film Armageddon, where an asteroid flies towards the Earth, and the Americans launch their drillers on two ships there. They sit on the asteroid, drill a well there, lay a nuclear charge inside of the asteroid, in order to blow it apart and save the Earth. Generally speaking, the probability of such a scenario exists. And if we talk about the elements of the supersystem, then, in order to repel such a threat, humanity must act in concert. What I mean is that the supersystem should be able to repel all factors impacting it, in any conditions. If this is not the case, then the system perishes. But in order to be able to repel such a factor, you must first be able to detect, discern it. What if the elements of the supersystem do not know how to detect the factors impacting the supersystem as a whole and them in particular? What then? So, the conception by which we live now is this. I know how to detect factors and even how to create them, but I won't tell you anything, thereby depriving the elements of the supersystem of the knowledge that is necessary for detecting a potentially dangerous factor, which may cause great damage and injury. This factor may not necessarily arise from the outside, it can also arise within the system, some kind of illness or something else, and if no one can detect it, then we ourselves will perish. So, which conception prevails in society now? The conception according to which the elements of the supersystem are deprived of knowledge and skills on how to detect the factors affecting them and the supersystem. And one day it may turn out that there will be no such element at all that can repel the factor affecting the supersystem. An informational exchange between elements within the supersystem and between the supersystem and the environment is subordinate to probabilistic predeterminations within the boundaries of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. As a result of this, over time, the elements of the supersystem accumulate informational differences from each other and can have several specializations, that is, they are suitable to be applied for different, particular objective, goal-oriented functions of governance. Thanks to this, the supersystem as a whole possesses memory, flexibility of behavior, that is, the reaction of the supersystem itself, of its fragments, 
of its elements on the same impact of the environment, which is not unambiguously predetermined, although it is predetermined in a probabilistic sense. What one person is not able to do alone, a collective of people is able to do together. With regard to memory, Pushkin has a good formula. Everyone knows the truth. That means one person cannot be a substitute for all of humanity. But the entire super system as a whole knows everything. One element possesses one piece of knowledge, another one, another piece of knowledge, and so on. And altogether, the elements of the super system know a certain whole. The latter is called the collective unconscious or collective mind, which, by the way, has its own specific algorithmics. But this is a slightly different topic. But the final goal of what I'm saying here is the question of how life of the human super system must be organized in such a way so that all elements can work in order to achieve the goals that are set towards the super system as a whole and which are distributed in some way all over elements of the super system. Who set the goals? God did. Therefore, we have to detect these goals and for this, all elements of the super system must have certain knowledge, understanding of what is happening globally as well as understanding of the processes flowing in the universe. But we are now being deprived of such knowledge. At the same time, we must repel the pressure of the environment. What is this concluded in? We must eat, plow the land, get everything we need for daily life, also dress ourselves, move around, and so on. These are necessary things. Therefore, the elements of the super system are facing two tasks. The elements of the super system must ensure their existence in the environment, which the existence can be either harmonious and stable or sustainable. The elements of the super system must work towards achieving the goals that have been set to them from above. But if all the activity and all the time of the elements in particular and of the entire system as a whole are subordinate only to ensuring a sustainable existence in the environment, clothes, food, desiring what others have, then we do not work towards achieving the goals set to us from above. And it is this very system that we live in. But it is necessary to organize the life of people in such a way so that the minimum time is spent on ensuring a harmonious and stable existence in the environment, and the maximum time is freed for the realization of the goals that are set to humanity. That's what we need. If we had it now, then I wouldn't have to give these lectures. Speaking of the so-called totalitarian Stalin, in his book Economic Problems of Socialism in the USSR, on pages 70-71, he said, It would be wrong to think that such a substantial advance in the cultural standard of the members of society can be brought about without substantial changes in the present status of labor. For this, it is necessary, first of all, to shorten the working day at least to six and subsequently to five hours. This is needed in order that the members of society might have the necessary free time to receive an all-around education. It is necessary, further, to introduce universal compulsory polytechnical education, which is required in order that the members of society might be able freely to choose their occupations and not be tied to some one occupation all their lives. It is likewise necessary that housing conditions should be radically improved, that real wages of workers and employees should be at least doubled, if not more, both by means of direct increases of wages and salaries, and more especially by further systematic reductions of prices for consumer goods. So, a workday has to be no more than four or five hours, 
the remaining time people have to spend on self-education, self-development, rearing children, and so on. And what have Democrats, who are for the good of man and so on, led to? Everyone works hard from morning till night, falls into stress. People work only to ensure their existence in the environment, and that's it. Moreover, there is not even talk about the aforementioned. And that accounts as real life, the life as it should be. So it is like the popular Russian song goes, in the country in which you do not live, because you cannot call it life, because this is not life, but torment, that is, Satanism in its pure form. Once again, generally speaking, we must strive to organize life in such a way so that we spend as little time as possible on ensuring our existence in the environment and spend as much time as possible on the realization of the goals that God has set to us. To say it differently, we must spend as much time as possible on the realization of those goals for the sake of which the super-system humanity was factually created. The pressure of the environment on the super-system. Again, here is a familiar picture. There are elements of the super-system, the environment, the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. The elements emit vibrations, oscillations. One element has one frequency, another element has another frequency, and so on. In this case, the pressure of the environment in terms of frequency is a lower frequency process. The environment affects the super-system. The influence of the environment, like everything in the universe, is of an oscillatory nature. But the frequencies of this effect of the environment are quite low compared to the minimum frequency at which the elements of the super-system are able to change their informational state. Now, let's remember the law of time. And we see that the technosphere, but not nature, has become an environment for man. And in this technosphere, which we have created, in pursuit of a better social consumer status, the frequencies of the environment have increased. And now they are such that a person does not have time to repel the pressure of the environment. So the frequencies have become such that a person cannot repel the pressure of the environment. And if he cannot repel a pressing factor, then what will happen to the person? That's right, he will perish. That is, the system will crush him. This is exactly what the law of time speaks about, that this new informational state has created such a pressure that we must reconsider all rules, social foundations, rules of life arrangement on the planet Earth as a whole. Since the introduction of the super-system into interaction with the environment, the informational content of the elements corresponding to the adaptive part develops under the highest hierarchical encompassing governance in the process of self-governance of the elements on the basis of the fundamental part of their informational content. In other words, the fundamental part is the foundation, and without this foundation there can be no development, and there must be a certain material carrier, but the adaptive part develops under the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, and under the influence of the environment on the basis of the fundamental part. The highest hierarchical encompassing governance in relation to the elements is of a two-leveled nature. On the one hand, these are processes of self-governance of the super-system as a whole. And on the other hand, it is an encompassing hierarchically higher governance in relation to the super-system as a whole. To put it another way, every element in particular, and the super-system as a whole, 
are under the direct governance of God, as well as in the mode of certain self-governance within the boundaries allowed from above. There is nothing new in what has been said, except that all this should be correlated with the fundamental and the adaptive parts. It would be useful now to give a definition concerning the showing of hand from the highest levels of the hierarchy. What is shown in this picture? Again, there is a certain super system, X. It is introduced into the environment. Next to it, there are other interacting super systems, Y and Z. All this is under the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. So, the higher hierarchical governance, without the words encompassing and highest, is a direct informational exchange with the super system from any level of the hierarchy. Indirect governance of the super system is when the super system is under the governing impact either of the environment or interacting super systems. So, all this aggregate of possibilities of governing influence on the super system is the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. It is necessary to understand that the higher hierarchical governance is a governing impact from a higher level of the hierarchy. Indirectly, it is governance through the environment or other super systems. And the highest hierarchical encompassing governance acts, governs, from all levels of the hierarchy through the governance of conjugate elements, thereby creating certain probabilistic predeterminations, also directly. Consequently, the environment can be a fragment of another encompassing supersystem that is being explored and can also be an aggregate of supersystems of the same hierarchical level with the supersystem under consideration. The hierarchy of supersystems is determined by the order of the expanding sequence of encompassing internestings. I understand that the latter formulation can be difficult for understanding. Order of the expanding sequence of encompassing internestings. And viewers might think that this is some kind of mess. But this is actually very simple. Just imagine a Russian matryoshka, also known as a Russian doll. Here, hierarchy does not mean greater strength for each subsequent level. In fact, it turns out that the matryoshka embraces all the other levels. Therefore, the wider the coverage of the processes included in the realm of hierarchical internecine is, the stronger the level. Therefore, it is logical to assume that there is a certain final matryoshka. Consideration of the supersystem, that is, highlighting it from among the entirety of the universe, is one of the stages of the entire function of governance. The holistic process of governance in the universe, when the supersystem is highlighted in it according to a certain set of qualities, also subdivides into governance of the environment, self-governance of the supersystem in the environment, direct higher hierarchical governance, indirect higher hierarchical governance. What I mean is, you should always keep this image in your mind. The supersystem is in the environment. The supersystem is under the pressure of the environment. The highest hierarchical encompassing governance has an impact on the environment. A higher hierarchical governance has an impact on the supersystem. So, at the very top, it is the highest hierarchical encompassing governance that exerts an impact. All this is shown in this scheme. So, there is an object of governance, a subject of governance, feed-forward lines, feedback lines, and other systems of governance of this kind. All this is part of a certain supersystem. In relation to the supersystem, there is also a subject of governance, for example, the environment, 
which has its impact on the super system as a whole, has an impact on every element. The environment as an encompassing governance in relation to this, evaluates the state of its governance and corrects it, if of course it possesses intellect. Remember, we already said that you should always keep the scheme of governance in your mind. No matter what process you consider, social processes, business processes, everyday life issues, relationships with anyone, and so on. Next, influence of intellect on the interaction between the environment and the super system. This is also an important point. Let's look at the super systems from the standpoint of the intellect conjugated with it as one whole. That is, there is a super system. It possesses intellect on the basis of which it can be ruled in a self-governing mode, can influence other fragments of the super system. So the environment influences the highest hierarchical encompassing governance influences. The existence of the super system occurs under the pressure of the environment. But the intellect itself determines the nature of its informational exchange with the super system, the internal hierarchy of the super system, the intellect conjugated with the super system. Accordingly, a higher hierarchical governance can be of an extremely diverse nature. This nature can be from a certain minimum to a certain maximum. Minimum – giving full autonomy of governance to the conjugate intellect. Showing of hand occurs only if the vector of errors of self-governance of the supersystem, its fragments and elements goes beyond the permissible, allowable boundaries. Maximum – a continuous issuance of direct directives to the conjugate intellect and control over their implementation. There exists a vast plurality of variants between the minimum and the maximum. For example, speaking of the relations between people and God, the Creator gifted people with the freedom of choice and the ability of achieving free will power, so that people do not go beyond the boundaries of God's allowance. If mankind goes beyond the boundaries of the allowance, then God gives mankind prompts, sending prophets, and so on. This is an example of minimum showing of hand governance. In any of the variants of a higher hierarchical governance, two sets of tasks fall on the conjugate intellect of the supersystem, the supersystem as a whole, its fragments, its single elements. The tasks are to withstand the pressure of the environment, use the resources free from this pressure to achieve the goals for the sake of which the supersystem was introduced into the environment. These two tasks form, throughout time, a current of goals of governance with respect to the environment. All this leads us to the question of the stability of the supersystem. Now, remember, the concept stability in terms of predictability is one of the key concepts of the sufficiently general theory of governance. What is considered stability? Remember we said, our goal in the USSR was communism. We walked steadily and stably towards communism. A step to the left, a step to the right, of course. And we were brought back to the necessary cause by the party. But when we achieved the goal, it turned out that we had been moving in the wrong direction all the time, the wrong goal. I mean that it is necessary to change not only the course and eliminate deviations from the course, but also to correct the goals themselves. Remember the predictor-corrector governance scheme and how to detect discern the goal. One must enter into a dialogue with the creator. But if all the resources of the super system are spent on the support of its stable existence in the environment, 
then its productivity in relation to the goals for the sake of which it was introduced into the environment is equal to zero. To put it another way, we do not fulfill the tasks entrusted to us by God. We are not doing the things for the purpose of which we were created. We are only satisfying ever-increasing material needs. This concerns materialists. There are also idealists who are withdrawn into themselves, into spirituality, as if they are self-developing, and they are not interested in anything else, neither society nor the processes flowing in it. But there is a super-system, it exists, and in relation to it, as to integrity, there is also a task. What is this task like? All Eastern teachings are not interested in these questions. But what if the super system is suppressed by the environment or pushed out by it? Then the achieving by the super system of any goals is out of the question. In essence, all of humanity as a super system introduced onto planet Earth, generally speaking, is engaged in foolishness and follows the satanic biblical conception. There is no happiness on earth. Happiness is in heaven. Humble yourself, accept your fate and repent. So, in the vector of goals, the first priority will be existence in the environment with a certain margin of stability in case of an increase in the pressure of the environment. The margin of stability of the super system, with respect to its existence in the environment, appears as the total number of its elements that are not used at a given time to repel and absorb the pressure of the environment. In other words, the free time fund of all elements of the super system. To say it differently, how many elements are free of the task of dealing with the pressure of the environment? And now the question is, how many elements in our country are free of this? Let's just say, who is engaged, for example, in fundamental sciences? And now they want to lead everyone into such a state in which everyone will have to repel the pressure of the environment. Everyone is totally engaged in their work and nothing more. And they have no time to raise their heads and ponder on God. Why? Speaking of the stability margin of the super system, it should be determined by the release of free elements, providing them with free time in order for them to detect, discern emerging factors. Now, no one sets such a task at all, and if they do, they do not understand its essence, that is, they set such tasks only intuitively. But the same margin of stability of the super system is its elemental resources, which can only be used for its objective, goal-oriented, interaction with the environment in accordance with the vector of goals of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. That is, the margin of stability simultaneously determines a possible productivity of the super system in relation to the environment. Conclusion. A mastery of the potential of development of the super system is bringing the super system to the maximum productivity in relation to the environment, according to the vector of goals of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. This is all said in scientific and academic terms. But if in a simple way, I have already said, we have to organize the life of the super system in such a way so that each and every element has as much free time as possible and some elements of the super system must be released so that the entire super system works towards achieving the goals set by the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, spending less time repelling the pressure of the environment. From these ten points, let us consider the quality of governance of the super system. The quality of governance is evaluated by the margin of stability of existence in the environment and by the productivity of the super system with respect to the environment. 
But the global predictor organizes life in such a way, so that all elements are illiterate, do not understand anything about governance, and remain occupied only with the repelling of the pressure of the environment. Moreover, the global predictor believes that there are too many elements on the planet Earth, so they must be mowed down. That is, the goals of the global predictor are purely satanic, and these goals have led the super system to a global system crisis. Now, let's talk about the mastery by the super system of the potential of development. Here is the example of humanity living in the biosphere of the planet Earth. Does the biosphere affect humanity? It does. The current of goals of such an action has three components. A continuous interaction with the environment by its nature is constant in terms of time. Indeed, there are such factors that constantly impact us. This generates in the system constantly functioning goal-oriented structures. That is to say, the super system has to constantly repel these factors. For example, one of such factors is the need to constantly eat. Therefore, to repel this factor, there must be constantly functioning structures. What kind of structures? Agriculture, food industry, and so on. Cyclically, regularly repeating, unambiguously predictable effect, these generate structures in the super system that cyclically resume their functioning. For example, after winter, summer comes. That is, in relation to our life, we have a Russian saying, prepare the sled in the summer, the cart in the winter. Which means, in winter there should be snow plows ready, in summer watering machines. Episodic interaction is statistically unordered, predictable only in a probabilistic sense. This generates structureless governance. The statistical characteristics of this governance will track the statistical characteristics of the current of goals. An error will lead to damage which will depend on the delay in their reaction. Let's say, can a comet fall on us? Generally speaking, it can. And then what? Do we need to constantly keep at the ready a structure that waits for this comet? If yes, then we have to pay these people a salary, feed them. What I mean is that it is necessary to organize everything in such a way so that everyone is ready for such a development of events. But in this case, we do not need a constant structure. But when necessary, recalling that movie Armageddon, the super system must be ready to organize itself in order to repel the comet. I'll tell you what I know, what I'm a specialist in. There are missile troops in the United States and in Russia too. There are missiles with nuclear warheads, and both the countries are ready to kill each other with these missiles. These missiles are waiting for a war. But if an asteroid appears and humanity is in danger, what can be done? One can launch missiles at that asteroid, gradually destroying it with nuclear charges. The interaction of the super system with the environment is impossible without displaying, reflecting, information from the environment into the super system. And this leads to a change in the anodering of the super system. In other words, it is necessary to build a certain vector of goals in relation to the aforementioned factors. Therefore, based on the building of the vector of goals, the mutual flow of structural and structuralist methods of governance can be organized in accordance with the entire function of governance. We remember that it consists of discerning, detecting a factor of the environment, forming a stereotype in order to discern that factor in the future, forming a vector of governance goals concerning this factor, 
forming an objective, goal-oriented function of governance, that is, a conception of governance, organizing a goal-orientating ruling structure, controlling, monitoring the activity carried out by the structure, liquidating the structure if it is not needed anymore, or supporting its functioning until its next usage. Based on this, if a certain element detects a factor of the environment with which he collides, the element distributes information about this factor via and to the elements of the supersystem, affecting the supersystem. The information will be received by the elements that have in their memory the necessary conception of governance, or by the elements capable of creating a conception. The conception will be given to the initiator of the structure. There will be elements that are free or not occupied in structures with less important priorities that possess the specialization necessary for the newly created structure, and so on, until the process of governance, according to the entire function of governance, is completed within an acceptable time frame. Here is what I have just said, but just with a clear example. What's going on now? There appeared an element, the internal predictor of the USSR, which detected the factors affecting our society. This element formed an informational algorithmic module. This is the conception of social safety. This module is brought to other elements that are able to master all these and then they will form a kind of structure from out of the basis of a structureless method of governance. And this structure will be able to repel the factor affecting the super-system. Everything that I described above in complicated scientific terms looks actually so simple. And this, as you now see, is being implemented. The only question is the speed of the process. And the speed of this process depends on whom? On us. That is, how soon we will spread this information by the method of automatic synchronization among the elements of the supersystem in which we live, including all of humanity. An observer who has no concept of structuralist governance can perceive a completely stable structuralist governance, either as a spontaneous, unrulable process, order from chaos, or he will look for stable structures where they do not exist. But in a number of cases, structural governance can be perceived as structureless. However, an observer who has no idea about structureless governance will again see chaos or will look for structures. Here is the picture. This is a change in the frequencies of social and technological time, according to the law of time. And each observer sees his own length of time. There are certain processes that are monitored by mafias, all sorts of occult orders, Masonic lodges, and so on. And these processes are long-term, that is, an ordinary person is used to thinking within the boundaries of five years, but there are 50 and 100-year plans. And an ordinary person who has no idea what we are talking about does not see these processes. Why? Because they are simply long-term, and therefore an ordinary person does not see these trends in the course of his life. But this was the case before the change of the correlation of the standard frequencies. Now, all processes, according to the law of time, have become so exposed that we already see who are awarded with Masonic orders. We see all these children's games of Masonic lodges. And if earlier Freemasonry had some influence, now it is nothing more than a children's game in the sandbox. According to the law of time, the situation changes very quickly, and all their plans collapse. Without knowing this, they blurted out the things that happen. You just need to be able to distinguish these processes. Governance of all these mafias, Masonic orders and lodges 
has always been structureless. They've always had structures within themselves, but their governance has always been structureless. They spread information in society, and this information was preparing society for the acceptance of certain scenarios. By the way, I would like to tell you at this stage of our video lectures that you should not think that I will tell you everything within the framework of this video course. I couldn't even tell you a hundredth of it all, even if I wanted to. I couldn't tell you everything. We decided to give this course that would build in people's minds an idea of how everything works, give a certain skeleton, but it is people who should grow the meat themselves by studying the KOB, the conception of social safety, and empowering all this with factological material. But in continuation of the Masonic theme, I will say this. Here we have looked into their prophecies, predictions, and so on. So how do they use them, and how should we treat them? Let's say we are a mafia. We have planned at a certain time to carry out a revolution in country X. We know that some processes will take 10 years, other processes 5 years, money, a leader needs to be prepared, and some other organizational issues need to be prepared. All this, of course, is approximate, you understand. And we let such nonsense into society with the help of books or other similar things. For example, Nostradamus predicted that tragic events would take place in a northern country at the beginning of the century, and some person, like our Mishka Gorbachev, with a spot on his head and so on, would do it. That is, in the most general sense, this matrix is formed, and then people trust this whole thing. People believe that it should happen because Nostradamus said so. Well, Nostradamus foresaw this, so this should come true. The conclusion from all this is that these manipulations conceal governance. Do you understand now? All this is done purposefully by certain forces, but ordinary people do not see these forces, and for these ordinary people, history is unrulable. It goes somehow by itself. It should be noted that all these predictions and prophecies should be taken seriously. But seriously in what sense? In the sense that one should be careful, treat them correctly, because with the help of prophecies and predictions, people are purposefully prepared for something. One has to learn to understand what scenarios are being played out. Therefore, at the beginning of this century, Tragic events are factually taking place in the northern country. If the volume of informational exchange with the environment exceeds the volume of the certain capabilities of the supersystem, then the organization of self-governance of the supersystem, only in a structural way, will lead to the fact that at each moment of time some of the oriented structures will be inactive and it will be impossible to organize an interaction for certain objectives due to the lack of free elements. Such a situation is a governor's failure situation. Now, let's illustrate this. There is the supersystem. There are elements of the supersystem, which are combined together through a structural way into all sorts of organizations. One is busy with this, another is busy with that, and so on. Every element is occupied with something. There is no single free element. Organization C1 repels this impact of the environment. The second organization C2 repels that impact of the environment. Cn repels another impact of the environment. But when new environmental influences appear, and there is no corresponding structure in place to repel it, then the supersystem will suffer certain damage, up to complete destruction. Therefore, there must be a combination of structural and structural methods of governance. Speaking of the conception of social safety, deadwater, 
then why did modern science fail to formulate its attitude to the factor that we call the law of time, which is detailed in this book? The informational state of society has changed, and no one has even noticed it. They did not attach importance to it, they did not detect this factor. And who detected it? The internal predictor of the USSR did. Is this some kind of organization? No. These are ordinary people, engineers and so on. Their unusualness is in the fact that they are graduates of the first Suvorov cadet schools, which were created under Stalin. They were given such knowledge under Stalin that the education system of that time enabled them to detect, discern these factors. Again, here is the power of Stalin's system. And now, thanks to the activities of these people, humanity will come out of the global system crisis, since the informational algorithmic module of the conception of social safety has been created. In order for the super system to function harmoniously, stably, and to be able to repel the environmental impacts arising in the course of its activity, including those generated within the system itself, it is necessary that the elements of the super-system have the necessary knowledge to be able to detect these factors. Again, we come to the two pyramids, the pyramid of knowledge and the pyramid of society. To say it differently, we need to master the methodology of cognition. This means that the education system should be such that all elements of the super-system know all this. And that's it. Today, what is the education system like? Not like that. And many now admire these specialized schools, which provide a narrow specialization beyond which a person does not see anything. People should have a mosaic worldview, not a kaleidoscopic one. Remember the third lecture on worldview systems. Therefore, the following conclusion proceeds from here. It is necessary that all information from the memory of the super-system as a whole is available to all its elements as the need for it arises. The picture shows the following. There are two vectors of goals. The vector of goals of the super-system and the vector of goals of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance and the super-system. What task is solved here? Look, there is the super-system, it has intellect, it is self-governed. And informational exchange with the highest hierarchical encompassing governance is carried out. There are impacts exerted by the environment, other super-systems and hierarchical systems. That is, everything is as in the holistic system of creation. What is this all about? When will the best self-governance mode of the super-system be? It is very simple. The super-system has a certain vector of goals in a certain hierarchical order. The most important goal is in the first place, the less important goal is in the second place. And at the end of the list, there are those goals that are disposable. However, the highest hierarchical encompassing governance also has a certain vector of goals towards the super-system. Then, the highest quality self-governance mode will be in the case when the vector of goals of the functioning of the super-system fully coincides with the vector of goals of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. We must understand that this is the ideal variant. This is still difficult to achieve, but we must endeavor towards it. Our state is a super-system ruled by the government. But we must have a clear state vector of goals. What state we are building, what kind of society we are building, what concept we live by, and so on. But in practice, in life, we see some kind of fuss, signs on the state offices are changing, which from the standpoint of this knowledge is simply ridiculous. But if we talk about the harmonious stability of the super-system, 
Then, in the first place, it is necessary to shorten the working day, so that there is more time for self-education. It is necessary to change the whole culture in general, to change the education system, contribute to the nervous transformation of people, focus on a demographically determined spectrum of needs, and so on. And all this should be included in the vector of goals. But no one talks about it. Proceeding from this, we can formulate the goals of our state. What the industry should be like, what education should be like, what should be taught, what the healthcare system should be like, what people's leisure time should be like and what it should be aimed at, and so on and so forth. And if all this is included in the vector of goals, then we will work towards achieving the goals, which the highest hierarchical encompassing governance has in relation to us. The next interesting question. In the Russian language, we have the following expression – sobornost. We also mentioned this word beforehand in one of our videos. What is sobornost or sobornost intellect? If the elements of the super-system themselves possess intellect, then during the informational exchange with each other, they generate a subordinate intellect in a probabilistic predetermined way. So, we see this subordinate intellect in the picture. And subordinate intellect, this is when the vector of goals of all elements coincide with each other. If every one of us has a vector of goals that coincides with the vector of goals of the highest hierarchical encompassing governance, then our intellect is subordinate. And if I am for the Tsar and you are for the General Secretary, then what kind of subordinate intellect can we talk about? We then have different measures of understanding, that is, the depth of identicality of goal-setting vectors generates the subordinate intellect. And for many, the subordinate intellect is purely a matter of genetic affiliation. But what is true or previous Russianness or the Russian concept of subordinate manifested in? In blood and urine tests, in nationality? No. Previousness has no nationality, religion, gender, language, and so on. It is manifested in the degree of spiritual conformity to God. So, many talk about spirituality. What is spirituality? Well, this is, they say, when a person reads spiritual books, reads prayers, sings mantras, meditates, does yoga, and so on. But we state that spirituality is a certain degree of conformity to God. How to measure the degree of conformity to God? According to God's vector of goals. How can you find it out? You have to enter into a dialogue with God. How can you enter into a dialogue with Him? You need to develop your sense of measure. Therefore, attempts to counter the subordinate intellect are ineffectual. Any two vectors of goals can be compared by the measure of their similarity with regards to their goals and order of priorities. This is where the concept, the depth of identicality of vectors of objectives come from. The power of the subordinate intellect, among other things, is determined by the depth of identicality of the vectors of objectives of the participants and the ability to bring their vectors of goals in conformity with the subordinate intellect and the highest hierarchical encompassing governance. That is, the more our vectors of goals coincide, both in their quality and in their hierarchy, the more powerful the subordinate intellect will be. Speaking of subordinates, I'd like to say that this Russian word subordinates is translated into English as cathedral, in meaning of Christian cathedrals. But in fact, the original meaning of this Russian word is the collective spirit of previous people, that is, the egregor of previousness. 
So, now let me tell you how, in Russia, they are trying to unite people under the name of different kinds of subordinates, including Christian ones. So, what's going on? There is a mechanical unification of people that is going on. But what really matters when bringing people together? It is important that the vectors of goals coincide. Therefore, many political parties, when they unite, begin to have internal conflicts, and as a result, many unions split. That is, if we are talking about unification, then all the sides of the unification should determine what goals each side has. For unification, there must be a common unifying platform, which ultimately will lead to the same question – does God exist or not? And to the next question – do we truly trust and follow Him or just imitate? Materialists say that there is no God. Idealists say that God exists, but He is, for instance, painted on the icon. And we say that there is no God on the icon, since there is God who exists, and there is a God who does not exist. On the icon it is a God who does not exist. And now the question is, how will we unite? On what grounds? That is why all these sorts of subordinates, pseudo-subordinates to be more correct, are falling apart. All political factions are also falling apart. If our goals coincide, then we will always find a common language. And if this is not the case, then there will be no harmonious stability of the process, the key indicator of quality of governance. Therefore, when parties unite against a hated regime in order to sweep it away, and the clarification of contradictions in their vectors of goals is left for later, then after the successful overthrow of the hated regime, they begin to squabble among themselves. And this does not lead to anything good, since the unification was mechanical. On this note, today we finish the topic of governance and super systems. In the next lecture, we will consider the topic of concentration of governance in super systems, and then we will move on to the topic egregors.